Hello, my name is Paul Miners and welcome back to another one of my Asana training videos. In this video, I want to share how I run my business using Asana. I get asked all the time by the clients that we work with, you know, what are you doing? How have you set up your account? How are you running your business with Asana? Because I often describe Asana as the operating system for your business. It's the kind of tool that I myself, my team, we all open every single day. We're all working in it throughout the day. We use it to communicate. It really is the primary channel or, or tool that we use to keep in contact and to collaborate on our work. So that's what I'm talking about in this video. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave me a comment below. And if you would like some one-on-one -on -one help with Asana, setting up your account, learning how to use the tool and training your team so that they adopt it successfully, then click the link in the description below to learn more about my Asana consulting options. Now, the first way that we use Asana to make sure it is uh, successfully used and adopted in our small team is that everything we're doing is stored somewhere in Asana. We, there's never a situation where, you know, I'll email my team and say, can you do this? If I need my team to do something, I will send them a task in Asana. And so I could do this any number of places. If I just think of a quick ad hoc task, instead of, again, emailing someone, I could click the quick add button up here and I could just create a new task. And so I can just say, you know, this is a task to be completed. You know, obviously that's the name of the task. I can then assign this to somebody on my team. If I want, I can put this into a specific project if it's related to clients or sales or content, something like that. Or if I want to, I can just leave this as a standalone task. I don't have to put it in a project. I will often put in a bit of a description here. Um, so this is a bit like, you know, the subject of an email and sort of the body. So this is where I'll expand and provide more details about what it is that I need. I need. And then finally, and almost most importantly, I'll put a due date on so that the person receiving this knows when this task is due. And so I can send that task now, they receive it in their Asana, and this is how we, we manage a lot of our work. We just send tasks back and forth like this. We also use subtasks a lot in the account. So the way we manage our clients is we'll have a task like this where the name of the task is the name of the client. We put all of our clients into a project uh, here called clients. We have some custom fields, which has some data about the, the clients and the hours that we're tracking. And then down here in the subtasks, this is where I can say, you know, I can assign a task to somebody on my team. So I might say something like James Doe, you know, uh, zap Calendly to pipe, oops, to pipe drive, you know, and I can, I can even click in here. Again, I can provide more details in the description. I can assign this and I can um, put a date on it as well. And so we, we actually manage quite a lot of our work like this as subtasks in the sort of larger parent tasks. And so we've adopted this philosophy that anything that anyone is doing basically has to live somewhere in Asana, whether it be a standalone task, a task in a project, or a subtasks. If, if there's something we need to do, it lives in Asana. The other thing we do as a team in Asana is we use it in all of our meetings. So if I'm meeting with my colleague Warwick, if we're talking about a client or a project that we're working on, if we're talking or collaborating about a piece of content, and sometimes we'll just get on a video call and we'll, we'll be talking together. Uh, we work remote, but it's basically like we're in person, but we will have Asana open. And so as we're meeting and talking, I will be writing notes into Asana or I will be creating new tasks for the action items that each of us need to go and complete. If you use Zoom, there's actually a really useful Asana integration with Zoom. And uh, I've actually got a separate video on how to use that. That's quite handy if you do spend a lot of time on Zoom like me, you can actually bring up your tasks inside the native Zoom uh, caller and actually be typing notes right inside the, the Zoom interface. So that's pretty handy. Go ahead and check out that video. Now, I also use some saved searches to keep track of the work that my team is doing. So I have this saved search on my left hand sidebar called team workload. If I just show you the criteria for these for this search here, I'm basically looking at any task assigned to uh, these certain members of my team. I'm only looking for tasks that are incomplete. And uh, that's basically it. I'm just looking for any task assigned to these people. And so we, I've, I've sorted this by assignee. So I get this nice, clean, organized list. I can go down each person on my team. I can see what they're working on, what's coming up uh, on their workload. 
Now we don't use this, but another feature that a lot of my clients use is the workload feature. This is uh, this does require the business subscription. And so if you are scheduling out work in advance, and if you do need to estimate the hours and the time it takes to complete your work, the workload is a really powerful way of seeing, are we overloading our team in terms of the estimated workload, the estimated hours? Are we, are we putting too much on the team? Who has capacity to take on more work? So this is a more powerful way of, of keeping track of the team and, and how much work they have. But personally, uh, for my needs, a, a saved search is, is perfectly sufficient. Now, one of the main ways we use Asana is for communication. So as I grew my team and, and brought in more contractors, uh, I've brought them in to Asana and said, when we're talking and communicating internally, we do that in Asana. We don't need to use email to communicate internally. Of course, we do need email for communicating with clients and external parties, but at least if we're discussing projects and work internally, we do all of that in Asana. The advantage of that is that it keeps the conversation linked with the actual work that we're doing. So when I click on a task that one of my team is working on, not only can I see the details of the task, but I can see the conversation that I've had with them. I can check on the updates and the notes and comments that they've put in there as well. There are a few ways to communicate in Asana, and sometimes we will send a message like this, where I will type someone's name, and I can just send them an ad hoc message. This is a bit like sending an email where this is the email subject, and this is the body. It's just sort of an internal Asana message, if you like. Um, we use that uh, kind of occasionally, but more common is we will comment on tasks a bit like this. So here's a task that my colleague Warwick is working on. We've got the notes and subtasks here. And then down the bottom, I can comment, I can share updates or ask questions to get an update and that kind of thing. Because we do all of our communication through Asana, we rely heavily on using the inbox up here to manage notifications, to keep up to date with the uh, changes to tasks and the new comments and things coming in. Something I've instructed all of my team to do is when they receive a comment, once they've read it and they are happy with it, I've instructed them to click the like button down here to just simply acknowledge that they have received and seen the comment. And so I can see in my inbox here, Warwick has liked my comment. So I know, great, he's seen it, he's happy, he's gonna work on it. And that just removes any of the mystery around, you know, has, has he seen it, is he gonna do it? So just adopting that simple habit is a really great way to uh, keep everyone in the loop that yes, I've seen it, I'm good. The other thing I've instructed my team to do is once they've um, dealt with a, a comment, like, you know, I've got this comment from Holly here. So once I've read it and I've responded, or in my case, I've clicked the like button, I've shown that I like it and I've seen it, I then archive the notification. So this is something we all do is we archive our notifications once we've dealt with them. That helps you to uh, keep the inbox nice and clean and organized so that when new notifications and new comments come in, it's nice and clean and ready to go. If you leave your old notifications and your old comments in the inbox, the new stuff coming in tends to get a bit muddled up and uh, you, it's not always clear what you've dealt with and what you've seen and what's new. So that's just a really simple tip to make sure that you, that you get your team to adopt is have them archive those notifications in the inbox as you go. The other way we use Asana is we've linked it and integrated it quite heavily with other tools and systems that we use and we do that using Zapier. So for example, uh, if you've watched my channel and my videos before, you'll know that I also consult and support people with a CRM called Pipedrive. And so Pipedrive is the tool that I use to manage the inbound leads uh, into my business. And so once we win a deal in Pipedrive, once a client agrees to a project or signs up to one of our support packages, we win the deal in the CRM. And then Zapier, which is sitting in between Pipedrive and Asana, Zapier sees us win the deal and it will automatically then go and create a new task and subtasks for us in Asana. And based on the type of deal, Zapier can create different tasks or it could even create a new project using a template if I wanted to as well. For my business, we also use Calendly a lot. Both me and uh, my team members, we use Calendly to schedule the support calls with our clients. And so another thing we've done is we have Zapier then take the appointments from Calendly that get booked and automatically create new subtasks uh, for that appointment with the client on the necessary client task. So that way we can track all the, uh, the actions or the um, appointments that clients are booking inside the tasks in Asana. That way we can track the hours that each person has spent with uh, a client. 
Uh, Zapier really is a very powerful tool that works alongside Asana to further streamline the work that you're doing. And the final thing we do in Asana is we use a lot of templates to standardize the work and the tasks that we need to go and do. So one example of that is here in this content project. If I go to the customize menu, down the bottom here, I have a bunch of templates related to um, blog posts and podcasts we need to create, videos related to uh, Asana and Pipedrive, webinars and things like that. So here's an example of the, the checklist it takes to create an Asana video like this one that you're watching right now. You can see not only do I have a simple checklist of everything that needs to be done, but if I go into these tasks, you'll see there are actually notes for, in this case, the video cards that uh, Judy, my assistant, will need to go and add to the, the, the video once it's uh, ready to publish. And so uh, this is a great way of making sure that we follow the same process every single time. And so when I have an idea for a new video that I want to make, I can come up here, I can choose my template, you know, 10 great Asana tips. This is really handy as number one, it makes setting up a new task a lot quicker. Uh, number two, we can follow the same consistent process and checklist every single time. And three, I've got all my important notes, descriptions and things already set up in here. I don't have to store those in a separate document somewhere. I can just have it live all inside of Asana, which is where we're doing our work. And so those are some of the ways that me and my team are using Asana. I hope you've got one or two useful ideas from this video. But if you do need some one-on-one -on -one help with Asana, then again, check out the link in the description below to learn more about my Asana consulting options. One more time, thank you for listening, and I will see you in the next video.